thank you for joining us. This is um, Nancy Campbell from ISEP. We're all here for the ambassador training this morning. Um, if you could, we just want to make sure you can hear us okay. If you could let us know that our volume is good just by typing in a comment, that would be great. And then we'll get started in just a second. <laughs> oh, there we are. Hi. How do we see the <laughs> Thank you, Kaylee. Okay. Um, well, we want to be respectful of your time. <coughs> yep. We're going to be respectful of your time, so we want to go ahead and get started. Um, again, thank you for joining us. We know it's early um, for some of you. For those of you who um, are abroad in Europe, possibly in Africa, um, it's a little bit later. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to start out by we're going to start out by introducing ourselves. My name is Nancy Campbell. I am the Regional Director for Europe, and I also work with the Northeast United States. Some of you may have heard from me already um, as an ambassador if you work in my region. I'm going to hand it over here to Zoe. Hi, my name is Zoe. Some of you might have gotten emails from me. Um, I currently manage the ambassadors at ICEP.org email address. Um, I am the Communications and Marketing Manager at ICEP. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Jeanne d'Arc Boumis, and uh, I am the Regional Director for Africa and the Middle East. And uh, I've been also in communication with some of you who are in the Central Southeast USA. And uh, we are very pleased to have you with us today. Hello, I'm Chris. I am ICEP's Graphic Designer and Social Media Specialist. So I may have interacted with some of you uh, gathering photos for our upcoming catalog, and I look forward to interacting with a lot of you on social media. Hey, I'm Alex Proimos. I'm the Program Officer for ICEP Direct, and I've spoken to some of you as well. Thanks for coming. All right. So I'm going to get started with you all. Um, First, as Chris mentioned, just a, a little uh, plug, our new catalog is out and should be in your um, study abroad offices, um, either now or in the next few days. Um, so check them out. If um, you submitted photos, your pictures might be in there, quotes, things like that. So uh, you may be famous uh, any minute. I said famous any minute. So all right. I am going to share my screen. We're going to start with the PowerPoint. <laughs> Hello, can you still hear us? Oh, she, she's on the delay. Or oh, we muted ourselves. She's confused. Can we not on mute? No, she. Okay. All right, sorry guys, we're, uh, we're going to just share our PowerPoint with you so you can follow along. All right, great. So um, what we wanted to do first was just to uh, welcome you, as we've done, and then set a few expectations to what it means to be a student ambassador. This was um, a process where you had to apply. So you were chosen through um, your coordinator and through the program officers here who read your applications as being people who would be really great representatives of ISEM. So that speaks to you and the quality of your application and also uh, the professionalism with which you interacted in your study abroad offices with your coordinators. So um, that's a great honor. Um, what we hope that you can um, take from being a student ambassador is to really speak
speak about your experience and share your story. That's a really important part of the uh, re-entry process in, in terms of processing what you've learned, the, some of the comparisons you might have between your host culture and your home culture, um, and also to promote the value of study abroad to your fellow students. There are a lot of students who don't think they can do it for financial reasons. Maybe they're afraid, especially in another language. So it's really helpful for other students to see that a student just like them has done it and has had a really good experience. And then finally, just being a champion for ICEP in particular. So ICEP, we're going to talk about some of the values that we hold a little bit later on, but it is a particular program that's not like all of the others. So it's important to talk about how ICEP differs from the other programs that that students might choose from. <laughs> At the end of the day, we just want you to have fun. We want you to incorporate this into the activities you're already doing on your campus. And, and just think about how you would have liked to know certain things before you studied abroad and take that into consideration when talking to other students because you're going to make a huge difference in you know, what they think of study abroad and how, how their experience goes from start to finish. So in terms of, of what we would expect from you, um, we are going to have monthly activities that we will prompt you with through the ICEP ambassador email. These are going to be both on campus for those of you who have um, activities that you can participate in, like study abroad fairs. Pausing for technical difficulties, we realize that you're not seeing what we want you to see. Hello. But it's still a week left to do But that's not. Uh, so, okay, so I'll just do it here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So here's the PowerPoint. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to get back to what we expect from you. So, we expect. Um, Hopefully, monthly participation in activities on campus or online. We're going to go into more detail about ways that you can do that. We will prompt you with different contests to help give you creative ideas. But please feel free to use your creativity and the activities going on on your campus and through the social media um, of your school to, um, to participate. We talked about study abroad fairs. Some of you will have information sessions, ICEP information sessions. So um, that's a great time for you to go and talk to your coordinator about how you can contribute and how you can um, share your experience. And then finally, there'll be an activity log um, where you document your activities so we can keep track of who's doing what and make sure that we can get you what you need and support you through the process. Now, you can expect a lot from us as well. So we will be sending t-shirts and materials your way um, shortly so that you can wear them for any presentations you might give or at your study abroad fairs. Um, we're here to support you in your activities. If you have questions, if you would like um, help with uh, generating ideas, we are here to help. Uh, we'll be checking in regularly either um, for your online activities or your on-campus activities. That um, can, will either be from the general ICEP ambassador email address or from an individual regional director. We may, from time to time, ask you to participate in webinars. We often pick specific programs to highlight that we really want to bring awareness to. So if you've participated in a program to that particular location, we love having students speak about what your experience was, where you've been, and how it went. And then finally, we'll have a team of people who will provide resume resources for you. Um, this is a great opportunity to build some of your professional skills. And so we'll be hosting um, webinars to give you ideas about how to put being an ISEP ambassador on your resume and also highlighting study abroad in your um, interviews for your first job out of college. Now I'm going to turn it over to Alex, who is going to 
give you some information on some frequently asked questions that you might get from uh, prospective students. Hey again, everybody. So up on your screen now, you can see a picture of Natalie Ferguson, one of our ambassadors, actually our 2013-14 ambassador of the year. And she's using her customizable PowerPoints to kind of get across. And as you can see, the crowd is very enthused about what she's saying. Um, talking about ICEP, she's wearing her ICEP t-shirt, and she's at one of the info sessions held on her campus. So this is the kind of thing we encourage you guys to do to kind of get, at, get the word out to students about ISAP about study abroad in general, answer questions. Okay, so <clears throat> so in talking about ISAP, like Natalie was, one of the best things, like Nancy said, is getting the students to talk to other students. And so one of the, our biggest goals in this in this um, ambassador program is to dispel the myths about study abroad and how it how it's not accessible to certain students. Um, one of the big problems that we hear a lot of the time is that students say that they can't afford it or that they can't delay their academic schedule by by going abroad and it's going to take them an extra semester when actually that's not the case. With ICEP you can directly enroll, take you have access to almost any university class, all fields of study depending on the university and uh, it's, it's pretty accessible. Our exchange programs cost no more than the home tuitions that the students are paying and the direct programs are actually some of the most affordable in the in the industry. So, let's see. So one of the big questions that you'll get is what is the difference between exchange and direct? And the two main differences between the two are how you pay and where you go. So like I just said, with ICEP exchange, students are paying their home university's tuition, room and board, and all financial aid transfers. And so with ICEP direct, students are paying rates that uh, are in the host university's costs and like I said they're typically very affordable programs all over the world and oops I just changed the slide by mistake <laughs> sorry about that um, okay and so where you go is uh, also one of the big differences so with ICEP exchange your placement depends on what availability is around in, in every institution Whereas with ICEP Direct, you always have an excellent choice of placements. So an additional difference between Exchange and Direct is program offerings. So in Exchange, typically you'll have access to most or all university courses at the institution. And Direct, in most cases, will have that as well. But additionally, there are some programs that are exclusive to Direct students Typically, they're language-focused programs. Sometimes they're field of study focused. But these language-focused programs are in France, Germany, and a lot of South America as well. Uh, through Direct, we also have the Global Engagement Programs, which center around volunteer work, service learning for academic credit, independent study, community service, things like that. So if you think that's your way of getting hands-on experiences for you, then I suggest that you look into the Ghana and Costa Rica programs or, or tell, talk to students about those two programs. Um, further, the application process is a little different between Exchange and Direct. Due to the, uh, the work that goes into making the placements and switching students and universities, the priority deadline is a little earlier for ICEP Exchange. Uh, September 1st for spring students and February 15th is the priority deadline for fall students. Whereas ICEP Direct gives you a little more flexibility in when you apply. Deadlines vary by program, but some are as late as December 1st for spring programs and June 15th for fall programs. So where can students go? We have over 150 schools in almost 50 countries, um, lots of schools in the United States. Um, a comprehensive list can be found online on our website and to see the sites available, I will bring it up right now. Um, let's see. Go to. This is a image of our blog. Share that screen. Okay. Hello. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, we can send you the uh, link to the site's available list, but if you go to the ICEP.org homepage, you will you will see um, <laughs> you will see the list. You can go to the directory at the top right of the page, and it has universities by international locations, U.S. Uh, locations, and it will bring up a full list of schools, and then sites available to give you deadlines of when applications are due and what sites are still available for application. One second, we'll bring the PowerPoint back up. <laughs> All right, are we back on screen, Joe? Okay, okay, and so beyond the classroom, um, if you, we, ICEP makes an effort to give students the opportunity to get involved with the communities. We really encourage an immersive experience at any, at all levels, whatever is uh, individual to the students. So we really encourage an independent experience. So in doing that, we, we do, some programs do offer group activities, trips, events, well abroad. It depends on the program, but in most cases, we leave it up to the student to be more flexible and get involved with clubs, uh, services available through the institution things like that. So we really want to make sure that students know that they have the opportunity to get involved in the community that they want to be most comfortable in, the way that is right for them. Um, so does another question we get often is, does ICEP offer internship volunteer opportunities? Again, it depends on the program, but if you go to the directory pages on our website, uh, there's a tab that, that will tell you by university if that university does, and more specifically, what kind of opportunities are available. So now I will pass it to my good friend Zoe, and she will talk to you about the program. Before we pass it to Zoe, I also just, uh, as a public service announcement, wanted to let you know that we will be taking some time for your questions. So in your Google Plus uh, profile, if you want to comment on the video as you watch with any questions that you have, we'll answer those here in just a little bit. Thank you, Chris. Um, this is Zoe. Um, we're uh, going to talk to you about the kinds of activities um, that we would like you to participate in um, and to plan as a student ambassador. Um, as you may have seen from the most recent email you have received um, from us, there are on-campus and online ambassadors. And basically, the only difference is that in addition to working with ICEP, on-campus ambassadors can also contact their home coordinators um, to help with promotional activities on campus. Um, you, all ambassadors, can participate in online activities, and um, it's just easier for on-campus ambassadors to um, plan and participate in on-campus activities because they have um, that additional support from their coordinators. Um, so now I'm going to pass it to Jeanne d'Arc, who was once an ICEP coordinator and so has experience working with ambassadors and um, peer advisors, and we'll talk to you about the kinds of on-campus activities you can participate in. Thank you so much, Zoe. Um, for those of you who, are, who have signed up to do on-campus activities, um, a lot will depend on the need and assistance that your study abroad office, um, uh, uh, it depends on your study abroad office's needs. So the first step is to uh, reach out to your study abroad um, advisor and to identify what they um, in need of assistance with. Um, you will be able to participate in uh, several uh, presentations. Presentations can, can be um, classroom presentations. You can present at um, 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 organizations. You can also present at uh, university clubs and many other uh, venues. So that is to be done in collaboration with the study abroad advisor because they are the one who can uh, much easily reach out to uh, those uh, populations. Uh, as far as um, uh, information sessions are concerned, a lot of universities offer either weekly or um, a daily study abroad information sessions. And in those sessions, students are just uh, exploring opportunities to go abroad. And they would really benefit from hearing from you um, with regard to how you 
went about applying for a study abroad program and also your experience when you were abroad. So talk to your study abroad coordinator and find out what the study abroad session states are and offer to talk for five or ten minutes. Classroom presentations as well um, uh, is very uh, helpful for study abroad offices because you will be able to reach out to a population that I said might not necessarily be able to access to, which is your student, uh, your peer students on campus, because you are able to go and talk to them in classroom. Uh, to make that possible, the study abroad, your study abroad advisor can help you uh, coordinate and set up uh, little information sessions whereby you are able to talk for five or ten minutes, depending on um, the departments and the professors that are uh, interested in, um, in having you talk um, in their classrooms. I want to also talk about uh, resident hall presentations. These are not quite famous. These are not famous in the industry. Uh, a few universities are trying to reach out to uh, students in residence halls. You can uh, talk to students by teaming up with RAs. Uh, in collaboration with the study abroad co uh, advisor. Um, uh, it will be helpful for you to have a database where you will um, get, gather the email or contact information of the RDs and reach out to set up some kind of activities whereby you can again talk about your study abroad um, experience. So all of this will take some kind of coordination with uh, between you and the study abroad um, advisor and the constituency that you are trying to work with. Um, uh, I also would like to um, invite you, and actually ICEP uh, would expect that you present ICEP at study abroad fairs. Um, find out what those dates are. Some of the fairs are coming very uh, soon in uh, uh, September, October. So find out when those dates are. I said we'll uh, send you a T-shirt as uh, Zoe mentioned earlier, and then you can request for a contact table to present to represent ICEP. If possible, um, ask to be teamed up with a student from the country or the institutions, uh, the institution where you study abroad at. That would really give it a great uh, presentation, representation of that country and ICEP um, at that study abroad fair. And lastly, we also would like for you to welcome international students who are on campus. Just remember when you study abroad how you felt a little bit overwhelmed and a little bit at a loss. And a little bit of help from someone uh, on campus is so welcoming that we would like for you to extend that inter invitation to students uh, who are studying at your university. So again, talk to your study abroad advisor about how you can, do, how you can go about doing that. Um, check our ambassador toolkits for guidelines and uh, also ideas about how you can be active on your campus. And uh, I will just um, conclude by giving the floor to Zoe so that she can talk about actually um, being active on social media. Yes, thank you, Jean d'Arc. Um, so, um, John Dark went over an extensive list of things you can do um, on campus, and I want to talk to you about what you can do online. Um, there are a variety of things. Um, I think, um, you know, whether you do anything online or on campus, the most important, um, the greatest thing about your participation as a student ambassador is that we love to hear your study abroad stories. And so basically, um, we want to give you additional outlets to share that story and inspire other students. Um, to participate. Um, one of the things you um, might be familiar with is the ICEP Facebook group. Um, it's called International Student Exchange Programs. Um, you have to ask for permission to um, uh, join the group. It's a closed group, but that means that um, you can um, really freely share um, your insights and your opinions about what it was like to study abroad um, because it is a closed group and because um, you have that privacy. So it's a great forum. We have it's about uh, 10,000 students big. Um, and it's a great forum um, 
not only for prospective students to um, prospective students to get information about ISEP, but also for you to answer um, questions for prospective students. Um, it is a closed group, but you can invite some of your friends to join. So if your friends are interested in um, an ISEP program, you can tell them to join the group. And even if um, you did not study abroad in the country or at the university um, in which they're interested, somebody else um, likely has attended there in the group and can answer those questions. Um, just make sure that when you do um, request to join the group, um, that in your Facebook profile you have your university listed um, because we do get a lot of requests for people to join. One, sometimes our only way of making sure to see if you know, you're an ISEP student is making sure, or a prospective ISEP student, is making sure um, that your home university is an ISEP member. Um, something else that you can do um, online or, or even just um, that is a little bit more um, digital instead of uh, talking to people on campus is to take pictures of videos of, of your home campus and kind of give students um, a virtual tour. Um, surprisingly enough, a, a lot of the students uh, student photos we get are of you know all their travels, which is amazing, and we love seeing all of that. And there are some really phenomenal pictures. And if you have photos that are awesome, we suggest that um, you submit them to our yearly photo contest. Um, but something that students always ask for, or are always curious about, that we don't have a lot of are campus pictures. You know, what's it like to be a student at you know University of Vermont? I don't know. You know, um, so kind of document your daily life. You can do that through photos, through video, through Instagram. Um, always tag hashtag um, ISEP study abroad. Um, so those are things you can do. You can compile it um, in a blog post and submit a blog um, about your home campus and kind of a virtual tour of what it's like to be a student there um, on our blog. And likewise, um, you can write about your ISEP experience. Maybe you're not a very visual person, but you really like words. Um, so you can write. Um, submit a blog post. I'm not sure that I can share the screen. I'm going to try. Um, all right. Thank you so much, by the way, for bearing with us through our... Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Sorry, screen share. Okay, great. Um, this is our um, study abroad blog. Say that ten times fast. Um, and one of the things that we love about this blog and what we really try to do is to um, showcase the student story because we think that's the most important thing about um, study abroad is seeing, you know, students and and what they learn. So what you can do if you would like to submit your story is to click here, submit a blog post. Um, we try to limit them to 500 words um, because um, students don't like to read a lot. I know it's true. Um, I don't like to read a lot either, so it's okay. Um, so then we have guidelines, <laughs> guidelines, a submission form where you can submit your um, your blog posts. You can submit as many as you want, and each of them count as an activity. Um, all right, back to screen share. Google Hangouts, you are a tricky, tricky lady. <laughs> All right. Um, another thing you can do is answer um, email questions from prospective students. So that blog I just showed you, and I will go back there in a second, um, your um, ambassador bios, you'll, you'll have seen in your welcome form you submitted um, information about yourself and a photo. Um, and if you uh, ask to be featured on our blog, um, we have a list of um, student ambassadors sorted by region, which I will show you in just a second. Hello. How are you doing? All right. So as you can see, um, this is the page uh, at the top. You can say contact an ISEP ambassador. And you know, maybe somebody wants to contact an ISEP ambassador who has studied abroad in East Asia or India. 
and they'd be like, man, this girl probably knows what she's talking about. You know? Um, and somebody could send you a question. So we um, ask that if you uh, opt to participate in this, that you um, answer the questions that you get from prospective students um, about ISEP programs, um, specifically the ISEP program in which you participated. All right. Um, there you can also, um, as Nancy mentioned earlier, share your story in webinars or via Google Hangouts. Um, you, uh, ISEP staff might reach out to you and say, hey, we really want to promote um, University of Savoie in France. Can you please talk about that and your experience and what you learned um, and what you'd like other people to know or what you wish you had known before you left? And so those will be on an as the basis. Or um, you could hold your own kind of online office hours um, if you know that um, there is a need and students have a lot of interest. Um, you can, you know, Google Hangouts is amazing. And you can um, talk to people online that way. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Chris, who is going to explain how, you know, we're talking to you about all these activities. We're going to explain um, how you log them and how um, you kind of get, you know, I sub credit for them. Thank you, Zoe. <clears throat> yep, and like Zoe said, uh, now that we have kind of talked you through all these awesome activities that you can be doing on your campus, we want to make sure that we're keeping track of those and helping you celebrate the accomplishments that you have on your campus. So this is where our activity log comes in. Um, so if you go to our website, there's a specific section on uh, ISEP.org, especially for ambassadors. Uh, it's at www.ISEP.org slash ambassadors. Uh, we'll jump over there in just a second. But this right here is what the page looks like. And you can see up at the very top is our activity log. So this is where you will be logging. Um, Oh, yes. Good point. Thank you, Zoe. Um, <clears throat> when you go to ISEP.org uh, slash ambassadors, tools for download is over on the left side. And again, we'll walk through that in just a second. But the ac activity log is housed on that page, tools for download. Uh, so again, this is what the activity log itself looks like. So we will ask you your name, email address, a home university, and then we'll ask you to describe the different activities that you participated in. Uh, and with this activity log, we want to know all the great things that you're doing on campus. So it can be something as big as uh, participating in a study abroad fair, hosting an information session, um, or even just responding to an email, uh, posting on social media. All those kinds of things are great uh, and really help us um, to know what you're doing and what's working well. Uh, <clears throat> with this form, uh, we will use this uh, as a way to definitely keep track of the things that you have going on. Um, for a couple different purposes. Uh, one, this is what we use to uh, work with our Ambassador of the Year program. So there is a prize at the end of the year uh, for the most outstanding ambassador that we have. So it's really important uh, that you stay on top of these for that reason so you can win great prizes. Uh, we'll also have a number of contests throughout the year and we'll use those uh, as well, the activity log as well to keep track of those. Um, so there's lots of opportunities for you uh, to get some great prizes uh, by completing these activity logs. And also it's a way for us to help share the great things, again, that you're doing. Uh, if you have a particular activity that's really successful, we want to know about that so we can share that with other ambassadors uh, and make sure that everyone uh, is doing great work as well. So let's jump to the uh, ambassador.org site and see if we can... All right. All right. So if we go to ambassadors, um, <clears throat> go to students. You can go to alumni. Ambassador. So this brings you to the main ambassador page. Lots of great information here. Definitely uh, a great place to kind of spend some time uh, to know what our ambassador program looks like. And then over here on the left side, kind of toward the bottom, we have this tools for download button. So if you click there, uh, this is again where you can find the activity log up at the very top. 
but a lot of other great resources are here. Um, <clears throat> we have it broken out for U.S. students and for international students. Um, so depending on your campus, uh, some helpful information. Um, we'll jump back. Um, we also have some uh, prospective student sign-in sheets housed here. This is another uh, resource that will come up in one of our first contests. Um, so this is where you can find that. Um, and again, just some other great information. Alex mentioned before, uh, the PowerPoint template is housed here. Uh, I set handouts with lots of great information. So this is definitely a page to uh, familiarize yourself with. Let's jump back now to our PowerPoint. And again, here in just a few minutes, we are going to start taking your questions. So if you do have any questions, make sure you're leaving those in the comments on the Google Plus page. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about um, how to make the most of the Ambassador Program. So obviously, uh, with this program, there's a lot of things that you guys are doing to help us. But we want to make sure that you know that this is a great opportunity for you as well. Uh, and there's a lot of great things you can learn um, from being part of the Ambassador Program. Um, so obviously, the contest and Ambassador of the Year programs uh, that I mentioned earlier, there's some great prizes that you can get there. Um, that's a great way to, again, celebrate the amazing things that you're doing on your campus. But beyond that, uh, there are a couple other uh, things that you get out of the Ambassador program. Um, so one, you do have a community of other ambassadors. Um, the ISEP network is all about um, our network and the community that revolves around that network. So we want to make sure uh, you know that ISEP Central staff is here, but you also have a community of other ambassadors um, that can relate to your experience. Um, again, for sharing ideas for ambassador programs, but also that are kind of going through something similar to you, um, have also had this amazing study abroad experience and are really excited to share their story. Um, so that can be a really powerful thing to have that community. Um, again, resume building and interviewing tips. Um, we will have some specific programs revolving around this throughout the year. Um, on our Ambassador website, you'll find some really great um, tips about resume building and interviewing tips built right in. Um, so that's something to be on the lookout for. But again, just keep in mind that a lot of the skills that you're going to be building through these programs, through these activities that you're putting on and an, as an Ambassador, are really marketable skills in, the, in your job search. Um, so definitely don't take that for granted. Things like public speaking skills, event planning, um, if you're Writing is something that's of interest to you. Writing for a blog and being published there uh, can all be really, really great uh, things to add to your resume. So definitely keep in mind uh, that the Ambassador Program does have lots of things going on um, that do benefit you. And also, uh, again, you're working to support diversity on your campus, which is a great thing um, and is a really powerful um, thing for you to be a part of uh, what's happening on your campus with diversity and internationalization. So again, that's all amazing things um, that you can get from the Ambassador Program. So we just want to make sure uh, that you definitely do keep those in mind as you go as well. With that, um, turn it back over. And we're going to um, start answering some of your questions. Um, again, if you do have more questions, uh, definitely add those to Google Plus as we go. But we do have some questions um, already that we've received. So. We're just going to switch back to um, our faces so we can, you know, talk to you as, as we're answering questions. There we go. Hey, guys. Hi. OK, our first question was, um, are you all going to receive this PowerPoint? Yes, we can send you the PowerPoint. It'll come to you through the ISAP Ambassador email address. So keep an eye out for that in your inboxes. Um, our first question is, is there a way for us to see what other ambassadors are doing? Um, I'm so glad you asked. Yes, there is. There's actually an ISEP Ambassadors um, Facebook group that um, after this uh, training session is over, you'll get an email um, asking you, well, first of all, with the um, PowerPoint presentation, as Nancy just mentioned, um, as well as a quick evaluation asking you um, how we did and is this helpful. We really hope so. If not, please tell us how to improve. Um, and as well, you will have um, uh, an invitation to join the ISEP um, Ambassador Facebook group where you can share. Um, it's it's a, a good way for you guys to share um, what you guys are doing. If you have a question, if you're like, hey, I really want to have 
you know, host a um, Google Hangout office hours, but I don't know how it works. Has somebody done this, and can they help me with this? Um, it's a place for you to connect. So, yeah. All right, our next question is, how many activities are expected of every ambassador? Um, that's a great question as well. Um, you <laughs> can. Um, we would like, um, if you are an on-campus um, ambassador, um, to at least participate in your um, study abroad fair. Um, that is is um, really like the basic uh, expectation um, that we have from you because it is really important. It's really that first point of contact with students. If you're an online ambassador, um, we expect at least one blog post, um, maybe two would be great. Um, so we want we want to we know that you guys are high achieving students um, who are busy and we really appreciate your time. Um, but how many um, how many activities? you are able to complete um, partly depends upon um, whether or not you are an on-campus ambassador and your um, what you determine with your coordinator um, and what your coordinator's expectations are of your um, of your participation. Um, in some cases, I know that some of you may be peer advisors um, in your study abroad offices as well, which might have more um, stringent requirements. In the tools for download um, page, um, on the ISAP Ambassadors website, there's actually also um, like a coordinator ambassador um, like contract almost, so that you guys can kind of establish um, what you um, you know w what you guys want to do and what what you expect from one another um, in terms of activities. Um, there's also in terms of um, online ambassadors um, again. Um, your basic activities, a couple blog posts would be great, but what we would expect from you is to be responsive. I think that's the, the most important thing for us is for you to be responsive to requests um, from staff. You know, with obviously understanding that if we call you during like midterms and you're like, hey, I can't do this because I have a test tomorrow, totally fine. But, um, you know, if we really need help, we, um, we would like you to um, help us. All right, hi again. Our next question is, if students at the study abroad fairs or information sessions want more information, who should I tell them to contact? Um, there are a few answers to this question. First, you'll have your um, sign-in sheet so the student can sign up with their email. If they want more information, they can write a little note and someone um, who's responsible for their country of interest will get back to them. Um, the second way a student can really get more information is by following all of our social media. So ask them to like our Facebook page, ask them to follow us on Twitter. They can always reach out to us that way and we'll get the information to the right person to get you the right answer. Does anyone else have anything to add? I think they can also email the ISEP Central general yep. email address. We have an ISEP Central um, email address that's general that um, we have someone monitor and send to the right person. It's info at ISEP.org. So those will get answered. They don't go into a black hole. They get uh, passed out throughout the staff so that the right person is answering your question. Thanks, Shandar. We have another question. Um, about the Ambassador Facebook group. Uh, somebody said that they've requested to be added and they haven't been yet. Um, we were waiting to monitor, thank you, um, <laughs> all of those requests. So after today, um, if you do request to join the group, we'll accept those requests after today. Um, so if you haven't found that group on Facebook, uh, make sure you're on the lookout for it um, as soon as you're finished here and we'll go through and add everybody to that. We also have another question that asks if, uh, if I can talk to my Spanish class about ICEP and study abroad. Absolutely. That's actually one of the things that we'd love for you to do is reach out to your classes and reach out to all your friends on campus and talk to them about your study abroad. So one way to go about doing this is to approach your, uh, your professor and express the desire of talking to the class. And most of the time they're really willing to give you uh, three to five minutes or sometimes even ten minutes to um, share your study abroad experience. Uh, you are also um, welcome to reach out to your study abroad uh, advisor who can organize a, um, a, a small uh, conversation with your Spanish uh, class 
and even other Spanish um, classes uh, on campus and some other um, major courses uh, classes as well. So that is definitely something that we encourage. But the most easiest way to go about doing this is to reach out to your uh, professor and just uh, share the desire to talk about study abroad. Thanks. All right. It looks like that's all of the questions we've gotten. We'll stay on for just a couple more minutes and make sure we've, we've gotten all your questions. If you do have more questions as you begin to plan your activities, please feel free to email the ambassador email address. It's ICEP ambassadors at ICEP.org. Oh, just ambassadors at ICEP.org. Um, that should be hopefully easy to remember, even though I can't. <laughs> um, and we will get back to you with any answers. So please feel free to reach out at any time. We'd love to hear from you, love to hear what's going on, what, what's working and what's not. Um, so again, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. We know for some of you it's early in the morning. We hope you have a great weekend. And we hope to hear from you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.